Welcome to our Good Friday service. And a big thank you to John Featherstone for putting it together. He's used readings and reflections based on the gospel accounts, some material from the Iona community, Michael Coy's prayers of life, and also some other prose and poetry. We're going to give you some Bible references, but not read the passages. So if you want to pause the video to look those up, feel free. And you also might want to gather some props to help you with this reflection. If you do, you could go and get a towel, a wafer or a cracker, a glass of wine or juice, some olives, a piece of rope, some brambles, a cross, a piece of clothing, and a nail. If you don't want to gather them, that's fine. We've got some here with us. Before we start the reflection, you might like to pause the video and listen to or see Graham Kendrick's Come and See. You can find it on YouTube or it's in Songs of Fellowship, number 67. Andrew. The Towel, John 13, verses 1 to 17. It is the day before the day before Passover, the day before Good Friday. It is evening, a room has been prepared, the twelve are gathered expectingly and anxiously. It is to be Passover, or something more significant even than that. Jesus is there, but behaving oddly. During supper, Jesus, well aware, that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from the table, took a towel, tied it around him. Then he poured water into a bowl and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel. You're not washing my feet, said Peter. I won't let you. It's not your place to be this, the servant with we as your masters. You are the one we call Lord. You are the one on whose words we hang. You are the one we always follow, never reject, never betray, and never deny. Peter, don't pretend to be perfect. You are in need of washing as much as anyone. You will never reject, never betray, never deny. Will you? Will any of you? The one you now call servant is your Lord. For a good world, a man may give his life with pride. But for a bad world and for people who reject, betray, deny, it is much harder. His power is in his weakness. And you may not know this today, nor think it tomorrow. When from a cross against the sky, he hangs helpless. By this is the way the world is transformed by loving the unlovely, by dying for the lifeless, by forgiving those like you who cannot see what they are or know who he is. Be still, let your feet be washed and your mouth be closed. Let your Lord do for what you must do for others. Hold the towel and think about the ways Jesus serves, supports, loves you, and think of those you seek to serve, support, and love. The Wafer and Wine. Mark 14, verses 17 to 26, and John 15. Later the same evening, as the Passover meal seemed to be unfolding naturally, once again Jesus upset his closest friends. One of you here now will betray me. One of you here now will deny me. All of you here now will reject me, will disown me, will fall away from me. Surely not I, each one said. Yet with you, even you, I share this wafer and this wine, this Passover wafer, this Passover wine, but now given for you, 
for I am the vine and you are my branches. Let's reflect on Bob Hartman's I am the vine. I am the vine, said Jesus to his friends. He said, I am the vine and you, you are the branches. Let me flow in you, let me grow in you and we will make grapes together. Here is the wine, said Jesus to his friends. He said, here is the wine. It pours just like blood. Drink of me when you come together. Think of me and never forget that love gives up its life for a friend. I am the vine, said Jesus. Here is the wine, said Jesus. I live my life. I give my life. <laughs> So the bread of the Passover, unleavened and made in haste, became Jesus's body. Take, eat, he said, given for you. And this cup, this Seder cup, which celebrates Jewish freedom from slavery, becomes Jesus' blood. Drink this, all of you, for the forgiveness of, and freedom from all your sins. Never again will I eat, beg your pardon. Never again will I eat this bread or drink this wine with you until I drink it with you in my father's kingdom. So Passover has been transformed into his last supper, the last supper. The Olive Grove, Mark 14, verses 32 to 52. They went out with him all but one of those who had sat with him at table. He led them to an olive grove above and beyond the city. An olive grove appropriately sweet and bitter, sweet to smell, bitter to taste, for a sweet and bitter experience. Eat an olive, especially if you dislike it, and think of the bitterness to come. Here he prayed while they slept, if only Lord, if only. Let us reflect on Peter Allen's I am the man. I am the man that God has called. I am his son and born to die. I want to live in peace forever. Dear God, why won't you hear my cry? I've done your will in all you wished for and I've been true to what you said. And now I want to be delivered from the pain which lies ahead. My friends are sleeping here beside me. They don't know what lies ahead. When one has gone and sold his brother, he'll kiss and wish that he were dead. And then the rest will run and leave me all alone to see it through. I only pray that you will help me to stay and face what I must do. And in that hope and trust, I leave it in your hands for you are near. I know that strength and power are given. Now I know I have no fear. Then he was kissed by Judas, who had come to the olive grove separately. Not the kiss of affection, but farewell. Not the kiss of loyalty, but betrayal. And because he was kissed, he was arrested. Because he was arrested, his friends fled. Some to go into hiding. One to stand by a fire and say, I never knew him. I never knew him. I never knew him. Until a cock crowed.
Mm. Let us reflect on Roger Willister's homecoming. Good to have you back, son, the old man said. Nice to be back. You've had a rough time. The eyes clouded with guilt. Hope you don't think I let you down. The younger shook his head. You warned me back, but it wasn't the nails, it was the kiss. The Rope, Mark 14, verses 53 to 65, and Mark 15, verses 1 to 5. It was at night that Jesus was brought before the religious leaders and accused of the sin of blasphemy and of threatening insurrection. But having no power to deal with him, and certainly not to execute him, they handed him over to the state governor, Make a knot and pull that rope tightly. It was in the morning that Jesus was brought and was brought before Pilate. Are you king of the Jews? Is it you who say this? What have you to say? But his lips were bound, but his body was bound and his silence said it all, for he had already spoken volumes. Let us reflect on Michael Coist. It is too late for you to be quiet. Lord, it's too late for you to be quiet. You have spoken too much. You have fought too much. You were not sensible, you know. You exaggerated. It was bound to happen. You called the better people a breed of vipers. You told them that their hearts were black sepulchres with fine exterior. You kissed the decaying lepers. You spoke fearlessly with unacceptable strangers. You ate with notorious sinners. You said street walkers would be the first in paradise. You got on well with the poor, the tramps and the cripples. You belittled the religious regulations. You interpreted the, the law and reduced it to one little commandment, to love. Now they are avenging themselves. They have taken steps against you. They have approached the authorities and action will follow. Lord, I know if I live a little like you, I shall be condemned. But help me to fight, help me to speak, help me to live your gospel to the end, to the folly of the cross. The Brambles. We're reading from Mark 15, verses 6 to 20. He was found not guilty of any criminal charges. Not guilty, you notice, not guilty. But because he was an embarrassment, an embarrassment to the religious leaders, to the state authorities, to the crowd, which once followed him, and he made available for people to decide his fate. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate washed his hands. His soldiers spat with venom, struck him about the head, and placed a mock crown of thorns on his head a mock royal robe around his shoulders and mocked him as the king of the Jews.
twist the brambles into a crown like I have done and think of the injustice being done to Jesus. Their misunderstanding that caused them to do it and what you have discovered of Jesus that you that they missed. Cursed and spat on, whipped and humiliated, he took on his shoulders their one gift, a cross. Yes, a cross which he accepted with grace but stumbled under its weight. He stumbled and fell and stumbled and fell and stumbled and fell on the road to Golgotha. Let's reflect on Michael Kois, the Lord, here is your cross. Lord, here is your cross, your cross as if, if it is your cross. You had no cross and you came to get ours. And all through your life and now on the way to Golgotha, you took upon you, one by one, the sins of our world. You have to go forward and bend and suffer and fall again and again and again. But the cross must be carried. Jesus and Mary verses 17 to 27. If the journey was agony to walk, for whom was it agony to watch? Many had gathered to watch that sad procession to Golgotha, but among them stood Mary, mother of Jesus, watching and weeping, as she remembered another journey her journey to his birth, now followed by this journey, his journey to his death. Mary walks in the crowd unknown, but she doesn't take her eyes from you. Every gesture of yours, every sigh, every blow, every wound, she feels too. She knows your sufferings, feels your sufferings, but still she walks with you all the way. May I follow like Mary. May I journey with Jesus from birth to death. May Mary's journey be my journey, her devotion, my devotion to the son who brought her joy and sadness and gives us both eternal life. The Cross, Luke 23, verses 32 to 34. When they came to the place called the Skull, Golgotha, there they crucified him along with two criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, while they divided up his clothes among them by casting lots. Stripped of clothes and stripped of dignity, Standing naked before the crowd, you suffer the final act of humiliation. Nothing now comes between you and the cross. Lord, strip me of everything which keeps me from being close to you. All those trappings and possessions and pleasures and failings which hurt me 
and hide me from your sight. Lord, strip me of everything which keeps me from your love. One Peter three verse eighteen. For Christ died for our sins, once and for all. The righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. Let us reflect on Peter Casey's. What is it like, Lord, to die? What is it like, Lord, to die in pain? on Calvary's hill and know that those who condemn you thought that they were doing God's will. What is it like, Lord, to walk through the streets where no one cares and see the people all passing wrapped up in their private affairs? What is it like, Lord, to starve with barren fields all around and know that somewhere else farmers plant food back into the ground. What is it like, Lord, to burn, consumed by napalm's flame? And know that those who dropped it, they did so in liberty's name. What is it like, Lord, to die in pain each day again? Or still you're crucified daily, living and dying with men. Let us hear from the Iona community. It was on the Friday. It was on the Friday they ended it all. He took the insults, the bruises, the spit on the face, the thongs on the back. He took the sight of his friends turning and running away. He let them do their worst until the worst was done. As the Friday, they ended all. And would have finished them too had he not cried, Father, forgive them. And so the revolution began. The cloth on the cross. A piece of cloth draped over the cross. Is it the remains of his clothes or a cloth for his burial or the swaddling cloth of a rebirth? Our final reflection is from Michael Coy's Prayer of Life. Let's forget it now and all go home. He's buried and the stone is in place. His family is in tears. His friends are lost. This time it really is over. Lord, it's not over. You are in agony till the end of time, I know. Men tread the way of the cross in relays. The resurrection will only be complete when they have reached the end of the way. I am on the road. I have a small share of your suffering and others have theirs. Together, we help you to carry the burden that you have carried and made divine. There lies my hope, Lord, and my trust. There is not a fraction of my little suffering that you have not already lived and transformed into infinite redemption. When the road is hard and monotonous, when it leads to the grave, I know that beyond the grave you are waiting for me in your glory. Lord, help me to travel along my way faithfully. Help me to recognise you and to help you in my fellow pilgrims. For it would be a lie to weep before your lifeless image if I did not follow you living on the road all people travel. Amen. Our reflections have concluded, but you may like to continue to worship.
by singing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Again, you can find it on YouTube or it's number 596 in Songs of Fellowship. Thank you for joining us for these reflections and we look forward to sharing with you as we celebrate on Easter Sunday morning. God bless you all.